Hi everyone, I'm Jace. Welcome back to my channel. And today's video is actually a video that I wanted to do for a long time, but I haven't really had the time or I guess you could say courage to do so. The topic does require a lot of research, that's why it took a little long. And I've also planned to release it during the summer months because that's what everyone has been doing. But the topic is relevant even today. So today's video will be about sun care and the product recommendations that I have for sunblock. These are the products that I've been using. So before I go through all the products that I want to talk about, I want to talk about first about why we still need to wear sunblock even while indoors. Now as you know, the sun is everywhere and the sun is the main source of most of the UV rays that we encounter on a daily basis. These UV rays are UVA and UVB. Now, UVB is shorter in wavelength and is normally the cause of sunburn as it burns the top layer of your skin. Now, UVA is actually longer and causes other sun damages including wrinkle formation, premature aging, and lessened skin elasticity. Now, the effects of sun damage aren't limited to what I just mentioned. You can sometimes see it in irritated acne. You could see it in darker scars or if your wounds are taking longer to lighten and dry. Those are other things that the sun can do. Now, it's easy to see why people think that we don't need sunblock on a daily basis, especially if we're work from home or staying indoors, online classes, if we're not going out. But the thing is, the sun is everywhere. It even shines in through your window. So you aren't exactly safe from the sun. It's just that you get less sun exposure while indoors. So still, putting on a layer of sunblock would still be very beneficial for you, especially if you take this time, this quarantine, to really focus on your skin. Now, in case you are new to sunblocks and this may be the first time that you're thinking about trying them or looking for one, it's good to know that there are multiple choices out there. Most people think that sunblocks are only those that you use at the beach, usually the thick ones that are sticky and cause a white cast. But there are a lot of sunblocks now for daily usage and they normally fall into two categories which are physical and chemical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens are more like the regular sunscreens that most people know of, but they are normally thinner these days. They don't cause much of a white cast and they mostly work by staying on top of your skin. Now, as for chemical sunscreens, based on what I know, there are also a lot in the market and they normally have ingredients that I honestly do not yet know that much about. But essentially, they are also effective and widely used just like physical sunblocks, but they may cause irritation to other people. Although, there are still a lot of people that go for chemical sunblocks instead because they don't leave a white cast and barely feel like sunblock once you apply them. Now, when looking for an actual sunblock, it's important to look at its SPF rating. The minimum recommended SPF level for daily use is 30 and the most recommended is 50. And it's also important that you choose a product that is broad spectrum, meaning that it blocks both UVA and UVB rays. I guess in the past, or maybe still sometimes, the SPF rating only covered the UVB rays. But since there's also a lot of UVA in the atmosphere, it's important that you block yourself against that as well. Now, it's either the sunblock will say that it is broad spectrum on the label itself, or you will also be able to see it through the PA plus ratings beside the SPF level. PA plus ratings indicate how much UVA rays are being blocked by your sunblock and it's usually seen after the SPF level. So you will see normally like SPF 50, PA plus plus plus. Essentially, the more plus signs that there are after the PA means that the higher level of UVA protection you are getting. Now, I've actually gone through a few sunblock products already and I want to share them with you today. And the first is the Super Screen Sun Gel SPF 50 from Face Republic. This is SPF 50 PA++++, which means it has a pretty high level of UVA protection. Now, this is actually a chemical sunscreen, and having said that, I find it to be non-irritating for me. First, it is alcohol-free, which may be important to some people, and it also does have niacinamide, which is known for brightening and a lot of other good purposes. Now, while spreading it on my skin, it could turn a little white, 
but once you pat it down, it leaves a nice glowing finish. It is important to note though that it has a somewhat herby or eucalyptus scent, especially while spreading it, so that might be something for you to consider. But for me, it isn't really that bad, especially since it fades quickly. And I really like to go for this sunblock if I want to go for a natural glow. Now moving on, this sunblock is actually the sunblock I've talked the most about on my channel. And it is the Bellason Expert for Face SPF 40. It also has a rating of PA++++. Although I initially thought that this was just a physical sunblock, I just found out while researching for this video that it is actually a chemical and physical sunblock mix. It has ingredients of both physical and chemical sunblocks. I think you know by now that I really love this just because it is so simple to apply on my skin. Once I pat it down, it feels like second skin to me. It leaves a very natural finish. I normally don't feel it, especially after patting it down. It's easy to reapply during the day. And it is essentially one of the simplest sunblocks that I've ever had. Also one of the first that I easily recommend to people. Since I've talked about the Bellosan Expert on my face a lot on my channel, I think it's also important to note that the product I just mentioned has a somewhat sister product, a sister sunscreen, which is the Bellosan Expert Tinted Sunscreen. And I actually know this to be a little more famous than the one I just mentioned. And it does have an SPF level of 50 with PA++++. So I think the reason why this is somewhat more famous or popular than the one I just mentioned is because it could double as a makeup base. Because it is tinted, a lot of people like to use this for their no makeup makeup look. And I think they like that it could be a part of their makeup as well. Now, personally, I actually don't like this as much as the one I just mentioned just because it has a somewhat weird powdery finish on my skin. I am not exactly sure why, but that's just what happens for me. As far as it having a tone adapting ingredient to it, I think it works pretty okay. Although I'm not sure if it will really work on people with much lighter or much darker skin tones than mine. So honestly, I don't really like this product that much on my face because like I said, it does have a weird powdery finish to it that I'm not a fan of. But it's not like I hate the sunblock. I understand why it's very popular with people. But yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. Now I want to talk about a sunblock that I actually just started using recently and it is the Lana Skin Protect Brightening Sunblock SPF 80 PA++++. Uh, now that was a mouthful. Anyway, this product was gifted to me and I've actually been enjoying it so far. Given the texture and consistency of it, I actually thought that it would be a physical sunscreen at first because of the white creamy texture to it. But I actually could only find chemical sunscreen ingredients in it. So I guess it is a chemical sunscreen after all. Upon application, this product actually leaves a very matte finish. It isn't too matte that's drying, but I do recommend that you moisturize yourself well before applying it just because it does leave a matte texture. I found that if I don't use enough moisturizer, the matte, the matte finish doesn't look as good as when I do use more moisturizer. I have noticed with this product that after application, my skin looks immediately brighter, which may be a good thing for some people. I've been enjoying it so far and it hasn't caused me any irritation for the one month that I've been using it. Now, since I've been talking about sunblocks that I've been using on my face, my last product will actually be the sunblock that I use on my body. And it is the Biore UV Spray SPF 50 PA++++. Now, the thing is, the reason why I don't use this on my face is because I prefer a somewhat thicker consistency when I apply sunblock on my face. But honestly, for my body, I do understand why people might be a bit lazy to apply on it. Personally, I am as well. So I've decided to purchase this Biore UV spray because it does come in a spray form, so it's a lot easier to spread. Now, when I researched on it, it does contain a very stable mix of chemical sunscreen ingredients. And I want to note that upon application, it has a very nice and cool feeling. The fragrance might be a bit strong to some people, but for me, I don't really smell it that much. 
Now, because it is a spray, it is very light on the skin. Again, it has a cool feeling and it's easy to spread. I use it mostly on my body, but I know people that use it on their face as well. So to wrap things up for this video, it is important that you still use a sunblock even while you're at home. Look for a sunblock that works for you. What worked for me may not be your preference, so it's important to do your own research. And now I hope that you will use sunblocks more often even while we are in a home setting. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you'd like to see me make more, you could click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when I make a new one. I hope you all have a nice day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!